start the pre-flight, we should actually secure the aircraft and check the administration. After that, we can check the electrics in the aircraft, turning on the ignition, making sure the CDIs or, or magnetos are off and remove any gust locks or covers. Great opportunity to check the landing lights and any other electrics as well. Checking the fuel quantity is a critical part of every daily or pre-flight inspection. We should always undo the caps to check manually rather than relying on siding gauges. Using a calibrated dipstick, we can confirm the correct amount of fuel for the flight that we've planned. It's a great opportunity to also check the integrity of the seals and the venting system of the aircraft's fuel tanks. After we finish this, we can move on to have a look at the fuel sample. This should be done from the lowest drain point in the aircraft. And we were looking for a couple of things here. We're looking for the color of the fuel, the clarity of it, any contamination, and separation. What we're trying to establish is whether or not we've actually got the presence of water predominantly. And you can see in this sample, there's a meniscus line, which clearly shows that we've got the heavier water at the bottom. Checking the wing integrity as part of the airframe check is a critical part of the inspection. Depending on the wing type, we'll be looking at rivets for metal structures, we'll look for damage, delamination, checking any vortex generators. We'll also take the opportunity to have a look at the pitot and make sure it's not blocked, bent, and that it's functioning correctly. Continuing a check of our airframe, we're going to have a look at the control surfaces here in case the flapper ons. We'll have a look at the control deflections and we'll ensure that there's no impingement. We'll also look at the three C's, correct operation, the condition, and any change from a previous inspection. Really important here to check the castellator nuts or the fixing hinges to make sure that there's no issues with the airframe. Looking at the wheels and the undercarriage, we're going to have a look at the tyres, looking for correct condition, making sure that the brakes are assembled correctly and the condition's good, looking for the integrity of the caliper and also the lines. And looking at the undercarriage fixing, looking for damage, any sign of cracking, fatigue or any movement of the undercarriage system. It's important to check for delamination on any legs and any areas where there could be potential fractures. Rocking the undercarriage gives us a good indication of how it's working. We're going to have a look at the static vents. Moving on to the rear of the fuselage, we want to check the general condition. We also want to have a look at any venting, antenna integrity. Looking at the cables that affix the rudders, we want to make sure that there's no strands broken. We want to have a look for any wear signs and ensure that they're correctly fastened with both ends. Looking at the elevator assembly and the horizontal stabiliser, again we're looking for correct operation and assembly. We want to make sure that there's full, free and correct movement and that the control horns and any control rods are correctly fastened. Good opportunity to also check the elevator trim and to make sure that there's full and free movement along with the hinges. Once we've already checked the rudder and the rest of the elevator, we'll move on and repeat the check of the fuselage on the opposite side. Moving to the front of the aircraft, we can now check the spinner and propeller assemblies using the 3C principle, correct operation, condition and change. A critical part of our pre-flight inspection is our engine bay. Here we've got a number of components that come together from the electrical systems, the inlet manifolds, the fuel delivery systems and lubrication systems. These are all important areas of the engine bay inspection and we can use it to check other parts of the consumable, such as the oil. It's really important to every aircraft will have unique characteristics that we need to look at depending on the engine configuration. But overall, the pre-flight and daily inspection is your key to guard against any possible defects that could affect the safe operation of that flight. Take your time, use the resource material, and we trust that this learning and education training video has been able to assist you in your understanding of what a proper and effective pre-flight or daily inspection includes. If you take the time to do a thorough daily inspection, you'll be aware of any potential problems before they become an issue. That is, any unusual amount of oil on the front wheel fairing may be nothing but excess, but it may mean a leakage somewhere. The daily inspection is your insurance against noticeable defects that could affect the safe completion of the flight. On behalf of Recreational Aviation Australia, thanks very much for watching.